Almighty God. There is nothing that can stop Him. There is nothing that can thwart His plan. And I'm so thankful that we serve that kind of God that holds all things in His hands from beginning to the end and everything in between. Can we join together right now as we begin this service and just begin to worship and magnify and lift up the Alpha and the Omega. Oh, the one which was, which is, and is to come. Lord, we magnify and exalt your holy and wonderful name. Hallelujah, Lord. You are great. You are greatly to be praised. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I thank you unto you. God, we bring glory. We bring honor, Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Oh, we thank you, God, that your hand is upon us, that you are leading and guiding us, oh God, that you are directing this thing called the church that is built upon the rock. Lord, I thank you, and we worship you and magnify you together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship. That's what He is to us. Let's magnify Him for who He is. God, You are everything. You're my way maker, God. You are my ever-present help in time of need. And I thank You. I love You. I'm 
magnify you, oh precious and wonderful God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So thankful for the presence of the Lord. Amen. That regardless of where we are, He is. He is everywhere at all times. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Amen. Thankful. Amen. Once again for the church's cooperation as we shift gears on this Tuesday night and go from our regular in-house service to a live stream service. Um, because of the increase in the diagnosis of cases in the Golden Triangle and Beaumont area of COVID-19, I think it's important for us to use godly wisdom and direction as we deal, amen, with these crises and situations. It's important, amen, that you take care of your health. I am given the position and title of pastor. My job is to make sure you make it to heaven. Amen. My job is not to make sure that you get there early, but that you make it there. And so sometimes we have to enact things that none of us really enjoy, but for the necessity of making sure that we continue to love the Lord our God with all of our might, we are doing things to take care of the body of Christ. Amen. A couple of quick announcements. This Thursday, amen, here at the church from 9 a.m. to noon will be the drive through food bank. Amen. And they're going to be driving through and they're needing help on a, both Wednesday at 10 a.m. to help preload all the bags and then get them over here to the uh, foyer of the church. So if you're available tomorrow at 10 a.m. to help out with that, I want to encourage you to come. Amen. And also on Thursday morning at 9 a.m. to distribute the bags. And we want to make sure that all of uh, our helpers have bring masks and do the things to make sure that they stay safe and keep all those that we're ministering to, keep them safe. And then also on Friday evening, the singles game night and the fusion jam session will both be canceled and they'll be rescheduled. Amen. And then on Sunday morning, we will be continuing our services once again here in-house. Amen. want to encourage you to show up early at 1030 a.m. for prayer. We will be continuing to practice our social distancing protocol. Uh, and I want to encourage you to limit handshaking, limit hugs, things like that, and encourage you if you feel it beneficial uh, for you, please wear a mask, not only entering the building, but amen, if need be, even while you are uh, seated at your seat. Amen. We do have two special sections, one for those 65 and older, amen, where they will sit, and those 64 and younger will sit on the other section, amen, just to do everything that we can to keep us safe and healthy during this time. Amen. We want to go to the Lord, our way maker, our ever-present help in time of need for some needs that we have this evening. Sister Diane Ellis continues to recover from surgery and is having a very difficult time and is in a lot of pain. We want to pray that God reach down and touch her. Sister Tina McDaniel as well needs a healing in her body. Amen. Brother Bill Elam uh, was at Baptist Hospital today dealing with some issues in his heart that he's dealing with. So we want to pray for him. Also for Larry Schechter for healing from COVID-19. His wife has passed from this as well. Pray that God would reach down and comfort and help them during this time for Kyle Muntz for healing from COVID-19 as well. I mean, want to bring one last, two more requests. One, can please continue to pray for the, the Delano family, amen, as their father was laid to rest this morning. Ask the Lord just to continue to strengthen them and help them during this time of grieving and loss. And also continue to pray for Brother Bullenbacher. Amen. Sister Kathy Bullenbacher, his wife's funeral, will be held tomorrow, Wednesday. The viewing will be at 12 noon with the funeral service at 1 p.m. at Farmer's Funeral Home in Silsby. And please be in prayer uh, for Brother Bullenbacher and the Bullenbacher family. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now for these needs. Lord Jesus, we come to you. 
Lord, you are our ever-present help in time of need. You are our healer, oh God. And you see these that need healing and they need a touch from you in their body. Lord, Sister Ellis, Sister McDaniel, Brother Elam, God, we ask you to reach down and touch them right now, Lord, for Larry Schechter and Kyle Munts, Lord. We pray that you reach down with your healing virtue, O oh God, and minister unto them as only you can, Lord. When the doctors are baffled, O oh God, we know that you are not, for you are the healer. And we ask you to reach down and minister and touch, God. We also ask you, God, for your peace that surpasses understanding right now, Lord, to touch both the Delano family, Lord, and Brother Bolenbacher and his family, Lord, during these times of loss, God. We ask you to reach down and minister to them, O oh Lord, and as we encourage the body to gather around and strengthen our brothers and sisters in the Lord, God, we ask you to be the one that holds them up, strengthen them, and guards their hearts and minds with your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned Bibles to Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 12. We're going to be reading there through verses 16. Amen. Paul writes to the Philippian church and says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. I want to read verse 13 in the New Living Translation. And it says this, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. I want to teach you on this topic tonight, 
the frailty of desire. The frailty of desire. C.S. Lewis made this statement. Our Lord finds our desire not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures. Look fooling around with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered to us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in the slum because he cannot imagine what it is meant by the offer of a holiday at sea. We are far too easily pleased with lesser things. The frailty of desire. Desire will only take us so far. Desire will only last for so long. And something more is needed than just desire. You see, living for God is not easy. If it were, there'd be a whole lot more people that were on this heaven-bound journey along with us. But good things do not come easy. But we do find that cheap things come easy. That bad things come easy and even unwholesome things come easy. But when we stop as the body of Christ, fellow believers, and we look at all the positives that come for living for God versus not living for Him. Friend, there's heaven over hell. Healthy, loving marriages versus affairs and divorce. Kids that grow up and live for God under the hand of His spiritual and emotional protection, healthy versus those that live for the world without that protection. Those that have healthy living lifestyles versus drugs and alcohol, love versus abuse and neglect. And I could go on and on this evening and talk about all the benefits that come along with living for God versus those that come along with not living for Him. And I'll, I'll stop with those that I've mentioned. And the question that ruminates and we must ask is why do so many people begin this journey but fall short in the long run? Why does the scripture say many are called but few are chosen? Why does it say in Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 and 14, enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction? And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way, which leadeth to life, and there are few who find it. See, the scripture lets us know that the road to destruction is wide and spacious. The road and the door to destruction is something that's big as well and easy to walk through. It's an easy path to walk that leads to eternal destruction. In fact, we would find that one doesn't have to exert any effort or any energy or any forethought at all on this path. It's the path to heaven. The path to heaven is a straight path and a narrow path. And it is a narrow gate and a difficult journey and path to walk. It requires out of those who will walk this path lots of effort. It requires Tremendous focus. It requires the exertion of massive amounts of energy and it requires mental determination. It is an unfortunate reality of life that the good things in life don't come cheap, nor do they come easy. But the truly good things are going to cost us something. In fact, we find out that they cost us dearly. The truly good things in life are going to require us to put forth tremendous amounts of effort to achieve them. The reality is, is that my flesh and your flesh always wants the easy road. And honestly, who doesn't? I don't think we're automatically bad or that we're even an automatically terrible person because there's a desire inside of us for the easy road. But unfortunately, what we do find is that giving in to that desire of ease creates absolutely nothing of worth in our lives. Giving in to that desire 
enough time of following the easy path creates a, a mentality in people that, that they deserve things for nothing. And in case you don't realize this as of yet, uh, those who expect things for nothing uh, end up with a life that one does not desire. Anyone who really has anything of value, anybody who has anything of worth, has worked for it. And being healthy, we see, takes work. It requires us to choose healthy options. And that takes work. Being healthy in our physical body requires exercise. And that takes work. Being healthy requires out of us to wake up early some mornings or stay up late so that we can engage in activities that uh, exert this body and cause the heart and the lungs uh, to be healthy. Having a good marriage takes work. The one thing I found out as a marriage family therapist is that marriages don't get good by accident, but they go bad by doing absolutely nothing. Raising good kids takes work. Having a nice home takes a lot of work. Yes, you may be able to buy a nice home, but to keep it a nice home requires continual work in renovation and upkeep and, and touch-ups to keep it a nice home. Having a nice vehicle takes work. Requires us taking it to somebody to change oil, to do regularly scheduled maintenance. It requires out of us to invest or to continue to invest money into that vehicle to make sure that it stays a nice vehicle. You see, I, I personally believe that almost everybody would rather go to heaven versus hell. But that takes work. That takes effort. Making it to heaven takes determination and consistency, and therein lies the problem. All of us at one time or another in life fall short in the area of desire. It's as if we go through periods of life where we, we lack motivation. It, it seems like the, the wind just gets taken out of our sails. We get distracted. We don't have enough energy, and the drive that we at one time had just seems to have disappeared. It's not that we've given up, but we are left wondering, what just happened? And I, I was doing so good, and then all of a sudden, boom, just absolutely nothing. We will sit for periods of time, for lack of a better term, just spin our wheels, doing absolutely nothing. Wasting time staring at the wall. Maybe for many of us, COVID came knocking. and causes us to ask the question, what's going to happen now to the progress that it seemed like we were making? What's going to happen to this uh, progress and uh, this momentum that it seemed like we had been, been developing? Uh, Apostolic Church, I want to tell you here tonight, uh, even though I'm in the sanctuary and you may be at home uh, listening on live stream, uh, COVID cannot stop the power of God. That COVID doesn't have the ability uh, to stop the freight train uh, that is our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, for there is nothing that is growing greater than him. There is nothing that is stronger than him. And he sees all things beginning from the end. And he knows that he knows. Friend, I want to tell you, he has a plan. And nothing's going to stop the plan and the purpose of God. Amen. Our individual lives get taken up by work, children, Sometimes health issues come along and, and take up large portions of our day and week and month. And we end up feeling like we have accomplished nothing. We look back at a list of goals and realize that we've come far short of achieving those goals. We'll spend days where at the end of the day we'll look at our to-do list and realize that we didn't cross one thing off. And all of a sudden we realize that guilt becomes to overwhelm us. Because we've been unproductive. Because we've wasted God's time and we haven't been a good steward of God's time. I've gotten behind in my annual Bible reading and maybe uh, just a day got ahead of me and I didn't spend time in prayer and guilt piles up. 
God, I, I said I was going to do better this week. God, on Sunday night, I, I stood around someone and said that I was going to do better some week and committed to them that I would fast and that I would pray with them. And here I am on Tuesday, uh, and it seems like already desire has broken underneath its fragileness of the load of which I want it to carry. Desire alone is, is not enough to propel me uh, in this walk with life and guilt piles up. If you've ever felt this way before, I want to tell you i got good news for you tonight because God knows exactly what you're dealing with. God knows exactly what we're facing, and God has an answer. And it's in our scripture that I read to you tonight in Philippians 2 and 13 where it says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. In the King James Version, that word will is talking about the mind of man. It is God that is working in us both to create a mindset, uh, amen, that pushes forward. To create a mindset that, that has a resolve uh, and a determination. Uh, and, and one of the things I love about this word in the Greek, uh, it's God working in us uh, to both to will, uh, meaning to fall in love with uh, the things of God, the work of God, the plan of God, uh, and, and get so involved in the things of God. God's working in us, in our will. To have a resolve and determination and love for the things of God. To both will up here, but go beyond from it just being up here. But it coming out in our actions uh, and our behaviors in our words. The word worketh in the Greek is a word from which we get our English word energy. For it is God which gives us the energy both cognitively and emotionally. And I want to tell you, that word in the Greek describes so much more than just energy. It's not like we hook up to God and treat Him like a cup of coffee or treat Him like an energy drink to spiritually or emotionally get us through the day. But that word describes a supernatural energy that is put forth by God Himself to effectively bring about positive Christ-like change in our lives. Friend, it literally means that it's the power from God working in us that is unchallengeable, that is unstoppable, the power of God that is all-powerful. It is the will. It's the plan. It's the purpose of God that goes forth from Him in us every moment of our life to help you and I change our character and change our behavior to be more like Christ. It's the energy and the power we supernaturally need to do this. So Philippians 2 and 13 really could say this, For it is God and His unchallengeable, unstoppable, all-powerful will that is empowering you to both want to and to do what's pleasing to Him. And when we fall short on desire, when we fall short uh, on drive, when we fall short uh, on persistence uh, and the uh, fragility uh, of desire happens to break, uh, friend, uh, the Spirit of God is still working in us to push us forward in Christ. Amen. And it is in those moments when we feel guilt, when we feel this emotion of frustration for lack of action, friend, don't let those emotions bring a spirit or feeling of condemnation upon you. But what we need to understand, that's the Spirit of God working in our conscience and working in our inner man to swift kick us in the spiritual seat of our pants and get us back up and get us back on track and going, amen, after the things of God. And just because we may lack momentarily drive doesn't mean the Spirit of God has given up. Just because we've ran out of energy doesn't mean that God has ran out of energy. But His Spirit is present and active in our life. It's active in our soul and 
pushes us toward him. Oh, do I have to remind us tonight of Isaiah 59 and 1. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear, when all you can do is just whisper out a simple prayer that says, Lord, help me. His ear hears the voice of his child, and he steps off his throne to move and reach down and touch uh, you and I. Uh, hallelujah. I want to tell you, we're not out of his reach. We've not fallen out of his hand. Uh, God has not forgetting us, uh, but he still hears us uh, and still answers prayer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God we do not worship a God made of wood or stone that's sitting on the top of a, a, some refrigerator in a donut shop somewhere. Uh, but we serve the almighty, living, everlasting God who both hears and sees all things. Amen. We can never forget. He is the one that began the good work in us. And he is the only one that is able to complete it. So you and I got to always remember, we didn't start this work in the first place. He did. When we surrendered to him, when we heard the gospel, when we heard the word of God preached unto us, and we were, we were moved in our spirit. We were moved in our emotions and said, that's exactly what I want. And we surrendered ourselves to him. The Bible says, he began a work in us. Uh, he moved into the midst uh, of this dilapidated uh, vessel uh, and said, hey, uh, I've got a remodel job that I've got to do. And he stepped in and he started tearing some things out. Uh, he got rid of things uh, that he didn't want. Uh, yes, there was still a structure there uh, that he created in us uh, from the very beginning in creation. Uh, oh, but the great carpenter stepped in to the middle uh, of a living soul uh, and began to remodel some things and remake some things. Uh, and he's doing a work in you and I. Amen. Amen. We're not out of his reach. He's not forgotten us. Amen. But he's working in us. He began this work in us by washing us of our sins, uh, cleansing us with his precious blood, and filling us with his all-powerful, never-ending spirit to keep us going. I thank God that God's still working on me. To make me what I need to be. Song little the, the, the children sang, He made the moon and the stars, and He spoke them into existence instantly. And all the wonderful things of creation that God created instantly, but God is still working on you and I, and how powerful and how wonderful and how majestic uh, must that work be uh, that he's doing in you and I because we know the scripture says one day uh, this old world uh, is going to pass away uh, amen it's all going to come to naught uh, but you and I are eternal living souls uh, that will reign with him uh, in eternity uh, friend we'll cast our crown down at his feet uh, when we walk through pearly gates uh, and we will Reign with him forever in the spirit, a spirit that makes us and keeps us going. So when those moments come, when our fragile desire to excel appears to be broken once again, notice the psalmist said in Psalms 43 and 5, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad. I want you to notice something. The psalmist is talking about his current condition. Why am I currently discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? And notice he also begins both those phrases with a simple three-letter word that says, why? When he doesn't know, and we, you don't know why you're down. When you don't know why you're discouraged. When you and I don't know why we're struggling just to make it through the day. 
When you and I don't know why our heart is heavy or why we feel sad or depressed. Uh, friends, sometimes the fact is uh, all we know is that we are and we may not know why. Uh, and when the motivation is all dry and ran out and uh, my fragile determination is broken uh, once again and my spirit and my emotions is empty, uh, those days will come. Uh, those days will go for all of us. But when they do. The psalmist says, uh, even though you don't know why, uh, even though you can't comprehend it, what do we do? I will put my hope in God. Regardless of what I feel in my emotions, my mind says, He is my way maker. He is my help. He is my shield and my defense. And when this depression, when this sadness is gone, I know where my hope lies. And it lies in Jesus. I put my I hope in God. And in the face of depression, difficult days, I will praise Him again. I will lift Him up again. My Savior and my God. The thing that's important for us to remember. Nowhere does it say in this precious word that I've got to feel like praising Him. Nowhere does it say that i got to have the emotions uh, associated uh, with the joy uh, of the Lord. But what we have to have uh, is a determination that says, I will praise Him again because He alone is worthy. He is high and lifted up uh, and His train fills the temple. And I will will praise him whether I'm at home or whether I'm in the house of God I thank God that I know that he is there and he's reaching out to me and will respond to my praise amen when fragile desire fails determination must kick in when fragile determination fails us God's spirit Oh, is still working. <laughs> when fragile determination is given up once again, my hope is in God. <laughs> when I've got another list of, of goals and to-dos that come up that I was excited about at one moment and overwhelmed the next, I know that my hope is in God. My life is in His hands. That God has a plan and a purpose for me. And that when determination, when it's broken, I know that God is working in me. God is working in you. Giving you, giving me both the power and the desire to do what pleases Him. Right now, I want you to close your eyes, to put your hand on your heart right now. I want you to pray for yourself. I want you to begin to ask God, God, help me right now. God, that when this fragile desire is broken, help me to be like the psalmist, O oh God, that I will put my hope in God. And I will praise you again. <laughs> oh, I will lift you up again. Oh, God. That when I just don't have the emotional energy, when sickness has sapped the spiritual strength that, that I once had, oh God, oh, I know that you're working in me. When pain has come along, and robbed me of desire to do that which is right. God, you're still working in me, God, both to will in this mind, to have a determined attitude, to have a determined spirit, to love the things of God, both in my will and in my actions, God, that you're doing a work in me, oh Lord. Come on, love him right now. Worship him. Oh, come on, worship Him and love Him. Lord, I give you my heart. 
what you want me to be. Every breath that I take, oh God, help me to go from giving to you to living for you. Oh God, that when I am a living sacrifice, it doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what my emotions are when I'm a living sacrifice. Oh God, I'm yours. I'm yours, oh God. When I'm up, I'm yours. When I'm down, I'm yours. When I'm encouraged and I'm on the mountaintop, I'm yours. And when I'm in the valley, I'm yours. I'm a living sacrifice. And I know that you are working, oh God, in me to give me the desire. And not the desire, but the power to do what pleases you. God, I love you. I thank you, Savior. I magnify your name. Jesus, in your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The frailty of desire. When desire is broken, it must be determination. The helmet of salvation that we wear upon our head. That we know that we know that I am His and He is mine. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. I'll see you Sunday morning, 10.30 for prayer, 11 o'clock for service. God bless you.